Absolutely. So, so yes, let's jump in. Let's just <laughs> jump in. Yeah. So as best as you can, would you mind telling us about what you do and how you started this business for yourself? Absolutely. So I have been involved in anti-racism work for about, you know, 15, 20 years. My community organizing work goes back probably even further than that. Um, but it was always a, so the anti-racism work was always something I did on the side. I was pastoring a church and then I was running a nonprofit and it was June of 2020. Uh, a friend of mine said, listen, you're running the Oakland Peace Center, but actually we need you to do the thing that you're really good at. Uh, which at the time I was like, that's hurtful. Yeah. Right? <laughs> given my entire life to the Oakland Peace Center. Um, but I mean, you were talking about not necessarily allowing ourselves to do what, uh, thinking we're not allowed to do the thing of our heart, right? Uh, and there was so much about the work of being an ED and executive director that was not a great fit for me. And I didn't necessarily do it all that well. Um, and people bore with me and we did our best, but What's been really interesting about the past year and a half is she she had that conversation with me. We uh, I I had kind of an awareness that I had spent the past seven years doing work that I hated for an organization I loved, and uh, sometime that fall had a conversation with the staff, and we figured out a way for the Oakland Peace Center to uh, continue without me, and actually to continue without an executive director at all. Um, oh. so horizontal staffing structure yeah. and which is very on brand, right? Yeah. It's not just a, like, can so. you do this? It's also like, uh, this is even more who you always yeah. were. Exactly. Win-win. Exactly. Yeah. And so what's lovely is I've spent the last 15 months, uh, doing, doing work that I love. And I think I had spent my whole adult life thinking you don't get to do that. Yes. Uh, you can do work you hate for a cause you love, um, but the idea of doing work you love and getting paid well to do it felt like I was doing something wrong. I really struggled with that at first. I've gotten much more comfortable with it recently and, um, and really am having a great time because I get to drop into organizations doing amazing work and help them wrestle with this very specific part of their work, which is uh, around anti-racism, anti-oppression. Sometimes in corporate spaces, it's called diversity, equity, and inclusion. But overall, it's how do we do this work in ways that is accountable to communities of color and committed to the thriving of communities of color? and yeah. other communities who are marginalized. Yes, and can you believe that they're like, please come in and teach us? You know, when, when my friend said to me, she was like, right now we really need you to be doing the thing you're good at. She said, also, I would like to see you not financially suffer. Um, and it's been shocking to me to discover I'm economically in a better place because I'm doing the work I love, but also I'm doing the work that um, feels like I'm serving people better than ever in the process. And that's huge for me. Yeah. The way it was meant to be. And you and I both uh, share a Christian faith. Yep. And I would just say, like, isn't that what we know about God? I mean, doesn't it fit with, it's on brand with God, right? Like, like yes. God who says, I'm here for everyone to thrive. Which is, and it's really interesting because on the one hand, I am definitely thriving personally. And on the other hand, part of my work is to invite people to recognize how they're accountable for making that possible for everybody. Yes. Because, yep. yeah, systemic injustice is part of why so many people don't get to do work they love. Uh, and I think that that's a big part of the work we get to do together is figure out how to create a different existence, not just for each of us individually, but for us as a collective. Yes, yes. And you, I can imagine, I can picture the more people hire you to change the culture in their walls, that it will seem normal, right? Yes. The CI will not be like, oh, the side thing that right. I guess we're supposed to do. It's going right. to seem like, what's wrong with you that that's not 
already embedded and that is a yep. dream right you That's know what's really beautiful is i'm all i've already had two of uh two of the organizations i work with who have said they are getting to hire better people because People are like, oh my gosh, you care about this? This has been my dream, right? And that's so beautiful is that really, you know, when, when word gets out that you're living with integrity, that you are committed to eradicating injustice, people are like, that's the kind of nonprofit or company or uh, service organization I want to be a part of. I want to be a part of something that's really paying attention to the big stuff. Right. The best people say, oh, it's safe to be there. It's safe yes. for me to offer my my gifts there and myself there. Yep. It's it's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, along those lines, can you uh, share maybe a story or two about your greatest joys in your work so far? You said the last 15 months, everything has really sounds opened up. Sounds like it opened up. Absolutely. Just give us a little... I don't know, day in the life of, of like a <laughs> joyful moment for uh, Without Fear Consulting. Is that, yeah. did I get that right? That's exactly and, right. Yeah. And you. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, for me, it's the aha moments. I was, I was working with, uh, I was working with an organization recently and did some work around helping them understand the history of race and uh, working definition of racism and, when I talked with a little bit about white supremacy culture, sometimes people freak out, have lots of anxiety responses. They have a very particular association with that term. It has to do with people in the Klan, with the white hoods. Right. And right. when I'm saying white supremacy culture is actually something we're all exposed to, it can raise anxieties. But there was this beautiful moment where a woman of color said, I've never heard the term before, but now that you're explaining it, oh, that's what I've been living with my whole life. And things were making sense to her. She now had language for her lived experience. Um, and, and the fact that she could bring that into this organization she has committed to and that she was being told, oh, that part of you matters too. It's not just your work experience. It's not just your expertise. It's this lived experience that you're in the process of figuring out. We want that. That's actually part of the work. That was a really beautiful moment for me. Yeah, that's one of the highlights of just this past week. Just this past week. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's just so exciting. It's exciting that that kind of change is possible. Because... The fact that we get to discover ourselves in new ways and the fact that we get to connect with each other in different ways, all because we're committed to creating more justice in the world. It turns out that stuff can be relational. It's not just obligatory. Yeah. And I think of, you know, I think people think of justice as being like, let's change big, big system mm -hmm. laws. And that yeah. sounds, I mean, I'm saying me too. It feels out of reach. Yeah. And yet right now I'm grounding into, we all have spheres where we can yeah. make justice, right? Exactly. And you're helping people of various sizes of spheres, yeah. right? Where That's like right. some of us, so I tend to focus on small, like solopreneurs and just yeah. starting to grow their staff. And I'm saying, isn't it exciting that you get to build even a small world for five people or, yes, and, and you're getting to, to build, I, I expect maybe 50, hundred people. I mean, right. that's right. Hundreds, thousands. Yep. I don't know. I don't even know your scale, but that's, so exciting. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I work with organizations anywhere from four or five staff to a hundred staff. Absolutely. To a hundred yeah. staff. Mm -hmm. And once they taste it, right? They Because I think, I suspect many have not tasted a space that yeah. really is committed to it in a more than words. Right. To the, to the pain points, right? Like yeah. willing to sacrifice for, for that to happen. Yeah. And, and then they can actually go and expect as much for themselves, first of all, mm -hmm. and then maybe create that somewhere else in yes. whatever their spheres are, yes. in their future, or even at the same time, wherever else they influence. Yes. It's, it's really exciting. And we're all leaders in that sense. And exactly. It's very, it's beautiful. So I'm just so grateful for the work that you do. That's yeah. how we met, isn't it? Was a, a shared commitment to this. Yes. yes. I mean, I was going to say that this you had 
uh, talked about how first you were an ED and you were also yep. kind of on the side, right? Yep. Doing these trainings. It was my side hustle. <laughs> and yeah, I was like, wait, isn't this your, I met you in the side hustle right. at my previous church where you were leading us into how to become a more anti-racist church is the yep. way I would say it. Yeah. And, um, and I watched you like open eyes, yep. open minds, open ways to talk about things that people yep. had felt. And also once you have language, right, then people can say like, wait, is that what I, am I really signed up for this? Right. And, <laughs> and you get to say a more hearty yes or no to mm -hmm. that journey. So, yeah. That's how we met, and that's how I was like, I must know this woman. I must <laughs> know her more. And and I just, yeah, I, I hope to, I hope to be more like you someday. Ditto, love ditto, love it. <laughs> um, so thank you. And and so what uh, what business challenge can we yeah. uh, talk about now? Yeah. So like I said, I, at one point I had thought maybe I want to talk about the multiplicity of things, the all the different hats I wear to do that. But um, what's uh, what's really, really present for me right now is living in that tension of people are bringing me in specifically to work on this very hard thing. Yeah. And um, at the same time, most folks, I don't think it's just conflict aversion. I think a lot of folks deeply care about the individuals they work with and want to take care of them. Mm -hmm. And I think at its most intense, my work can be a little confronting of, I'm not at all interested in kind of the individual stuff. I'm much more interested in the collective stuff. Um, but it still feels personalized. Uh, mm. to a lot of folks. We've been trained into thinking that racism is about me as an individual. And so even when I'm talking about systemic issues, it's easy for people to feel um, feel like this is about them as individuals. And so I'm a caretaker by nature. I think a lot of us who were raised as women were trained into the notion that that's what we're supposed to be all the time anyhow. Um, and so I'm wanting to pay attention to part of why I got brought in is to speak some hard truths and to name some things that uh, are getting in the way of an organization being its healthiest and most thriving anti-racist self. And um, all of us want to make sure to take care of everybody in the process. And so the tension is um, how honest to be. Am I holding back too much? Am I too worried about um, them feeling okay at the end of the process to tell the truths that need to be told? And I think that's what I'm sitting with as um, my challenge because the whole point of my business is to help people get better. And uh, at the same time, we all, we all want to be liked in the midst of the process. I used to work for an organization as a consultant where they said, our job is not to get Christmas cards. Our job is to do, to be honest enough that the head of the organization gets Christmas cards. Um, and I thought that was a great way of thinking about it, but this is also relational work. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's the business challenge I'm bringing, I think. Yeah. Um, I can already hear as you talk about it, that you know what you should do. Right. Mm -hmm. You're, you're clear about, cause that's the first starting place, right. Is, is that you're more committed to your client's transformation than your own being liked or, or your own stories about what you need. Right. Um, what, what maybe the story about what they want from you would rather have from you. Right. right? Even as they're saying, we want transformation. Right. Um, I think of uh, what helps me also is um, I have, I have written in, in my journal about clients about, you know, and, but it's really about me. Um, I pledge to see fill in blank name client in their, this is language I, I got from my coach, yeah. Yeah. seeing them in their sovereign, like they are sovereign beings. They have um, 
power. They have power mm -hmm. to lead themselves. They have power to choose. So sometimes, right, the stories that we make about what they can handle or can't handle right. from us, mm -hmm. right? That's sort yep. of the, the icky underneath that yeah. it helps me to say like, oh, I need to, I need to not put that on them, right? Yeah. That, that they need handling or um, just, and, and back again to our faith, right? That yeah. the God we have known, the, the creator, mother creator is the Holy Spirit, however universe source is holding all of us up on our paths and is enough for each of us. Each of us are yeah. different paths wherever we are. And our job, right, is then not to hold them up the also. Truth. Yep. Yeah. How does to, that, to how does trust, that sit? Yeah. To trust that they are, yeah, to not make those decisions for them, but to trust that they are capable of handling um, those truths. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, the way I think of it for you, when I think of you, because I experienced you in those trainings, yeah, I experienced you as a loving person all the way mm -hmm. through, right? Everything that you said, you did give us some, some tough truths to chew on. You <laughs> gave us, I mean, and, and it was great. And, um, and what I think of for you is to trust yourself to be a, coming from a place of love. Like, you know that, right? So whatever you say, is going to come with that energy yeah. and trusting that. Yeah. Which I think that, I mean, it's reasonable to think you might, I don't know, suddenly like fly off the handle or something. But really that's, I, I think that's not a <laughs> rational, like I bet in your, in your training, in your, you know, professional hat delivering service self, you are as gentle as you can be when you're delivering this. Yeah. Right. I think there are two kinds of anti-oppression consultants. There's the ones who go in because they love bringing the prophetic word. And there's the ones who bring the prophetic word because they love the people and don't necessarily love being prophetic. And I think that's, I fall more into that latter category. I don't know that everybody realizes that. So, um, and in the midst of that, I want to pay attention to what you're lifting up, which is really important, which is I also need to trust the people I'm working with um, enough to be able, enough to believe that they can handle the fullness of that truth. Yeah. Uh, a way that I'm trying to help myself go ahead and deliver the hard truth. Cause I, 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 similar to you, I would say I'm, I see a lot more than I'm willing to say. Yeah. And <laughs> what I realized um, as I was sort of processing this with someone else, like I will easily talk to a trusted friend and, and say, you know what I think that third person doesn't see is this, this, and this. Right. <laughs> or maybe I'm like counseling a, a trusted friend who's struggling with the third person. And easily I'll be like, oh, well, it could be that they're struggling with this, this, and this. And the thing under the thing is always this other thing. And, and I can see, it, right, that's easy for me because the stakes yeah. are low in yeah. a sense. Like I'm supporting, I'm going to say it to support my friend, to help her, them, like think of a different thing. Yeah. But um, when it's right directly to a person, then I'm like, oh, can I, can I also be this clever and brave enough to say it to their right. face and to say it in love, right, yeah. to say it as an offering and I know that I'm not always right, but, but I can say like, I wonder if it's this right. or that and let it land or not land. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that one of the things you do that I'd love to sit with more in my work is you do a really good job of asking, um, asking the questions that help people recognize uh, the things that they need to do for themselves to tap into what's going on inside of them. I could use more work on that as well. 
I'm definitely learning. I'm from my own coach. I'm writing down yeah. questions about how she delivers the the boom. It's <laughs> <laughs> very comfortable, I think, with the prophetic voice. So I'm I'm learning learning on that. I it's interesting. I um, this is a very simple tip, but I have. Yeah. learned that journaling is not just to vomit out emotions that are like <laughs> negative because I have to keep it all cheery on the outside. Yeah. That's like yeah. my twenties, teens, twenties journaling. And that's why I put it away. I've also learned that journaling can be telling myself what's true and telling it huh. um, almost like this is where affirmations come in. I, you know, it's easy yeah. to, Dismiss affirmations that sound like platitudes you don't relate to. Those right. are not for you. Right. Like your affirmation might be like, I affirm the prophetic voice inside mm. me. I affirm yeah. that the, the prophetic voice is my uh, tool for healing, bringing justice. Like just affirming that in yourself. Yeah. You know, make, make your own whatever Great. You need to know, but you, you know this, and then I've learned to plant it into ourselves. Yeah. And this is prayer, right? This is mantra. This is chanting. This is like why we, we just need reminders. Yeah. And, and that God's source is in that place, right? Like we can, we, it's not just like working hard and planting it. It's that God can like rain that down on us right yeah. it's with a rain of grace as you write the prophetic voice i receive the prophetic voice so i can deliver right so oh that's beautiful thank you it's <laughs> these are these are some of the ways that i'm learning to yeah. engage with god in uh from like mindset coaching yeah and quantum healing energy like in ways that church never talked about right. using language church never talked about right. but it was always the god that i've known and yes loved, and knew loved me yes but now it's opening up even more so i love that excited to to see you know receive your prophetic voice oh i have a, it just reminded me a social media coach yeah the lumps who i talked with actually last week and one of the things that they, one of the, um, my interactions with them was um, she, they sent me a, a rant, like a, a, a TikTok rant. Yeah. And, and I said, I said, really, am I allowed to, to be this person? <laughs> and because the rant, I know we're not saying to rant, but it, <laughs> it feels like that when you're like always used to packaging it. Yeah. In the nice. Nicely. Right? Mm -hmm. Like to really let it out. Anyway, salams, beautiful salams. They said, love I'd love to see your rants. And I was like, <gasps> hey, maybe I'll try that. I love it. Anyway, so I'm, I'm offering that to you. That's Go beautiful. ahead and if it feels like a rant, you know, maybe turn it up just, just a little bit to, <laughs> until it feels toward the rant and and oh, see what brilliant. happens everyone's yeah. gonna be okay right everyone yeah. is is a whole person with their own paths and you're gonna do it in love and grace and also it's in your contract that that's what they asked for <laughs> <laughs> hopefully they're paying for the rant they are they are <laughs> this is sorry one more thing that i've been saying to myself they are paying me to tell them things that they couldn't Google for themselves, yeah. right? How to be an anti-racist. There right. are books for this, right? Yep. What they need, what they have you in their actual physical or virtual space for is to like zing right to yeah. what, right? Like something yeah. beyond the how to, the here's the steps. Yep. You know, they, yep. they want all of that also. They need all of that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the steps only take you to like one layer of onion or something. Yes. And, and it's usually in those places where someone says like, oh, this is scary. I think I'll stop. Interestingly you know? enough, where people, when people get anxious, what they back into is often 
tell us what to do. Like we want a list. And that's a sign, I think, in anti-racism work of we are in an anxious place. They don't even realize it. Um, but yeah, I think that, so I think that that's really wise is noticing when people are moving into that space and saying, let's slow down and talk about what's really going on. Right. And yeah. that's, <laughs> I bet you've done that before. Yeah. And then sitting with silence. Yep. Letting everybody cook a little bit. Yep. And, and see what comes up. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And really, it's us saying, um, no, I really mean this question. I really mean, I'm really waiting for an answer. <laughs> yes. And that's our yeah, own. Yeah, it wasn't rhetorical. <laughs> no, no. And that's our own challenge, right? To just yeah. like allow that. Yeah. And trust in people's sovereignty, right? People's yeah. um, ability to go where they said they wanted to go. Absolutely. It's scary Absolutely. stuff though, man. I get it. <laughs> Cause of course, as we provoke others, we're also provoked ourselves. We end up having to do our own work. Yeah. Yeah. Which again, of course, universe, of course, that's how it works. Yes. Not surprising, but it's, it's right where we're meant to be. Uh, amen. I would love to support you any way I can, Thank anytime. You. Uh, so walk grateful with you. for this. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope people um, find others, uh, businesses, or um, what kind of clients would you like us to bring you? Can you can you say I, a dream? I am always yeah. My dream client is a team of folks within an organization where there's a few folks who have already recognized we know we can go further. Um, so for me, I don't tend to work with individual clients. I love a team who has a sense of uh, vision for, they may not know what's next. They just know something's got to be next. So it doesn't have to be everyone's on board. It can be. I believe very much that critical mass is at 10%. 10%. Yep. That's all See? it takes to transform That's... an organization. That's faith. <laughs> A tithe of the organization. That's right. <laughs> My goodness. That's, it's really hopeful. Yeah. Because the tide feels large, right? It's, yep. Yeah. All right. We're going to, we're going to look for people, companies, teams. Like I love that, it. Who are ready for some transformation. I love it. I'm super excited about that. Thank you, friend. Thank you, friend. Looking forward to another, another um, round of drinks. <laughs> I'm so in and I the am Bloody so Mary. grateful for <laughs> getting to benefit from Mindset Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye everyone. Bye.